What is up everyone? So uh, today, the E36 is off the lift and well, uh, I wanna work on it. I've been staring at it for months. If you guys don't know this car, essentially, right hand drive E36, I've had it forever. I put a, wait for it, wait for it. Where's the damn, it's been so long. There we go. A fully built S50, oh, the shock always falls off. Uh, fully built S50, turbo it, makes a bunch of power. Dyno tuned it, parked it. Because as you could probably tell, this car is pretty useless at anything over 300 horsepower. Yes, and I know it's my fault. It's just the drivetrain evolved before I evolved the rest of the chassis. I mean, the car is now a full M3 convert from subframes to control arms to everything but the vent. We've talked about this a couple months ago. It's been a while, but the big issue here is I need to cut the car up, right? because E36s can't fit a lot of tire underneath them. They have very tight arches. There's not much room to shove tire under there. And yes, there is combos, right? You can get like 17 by nine plus 44, run a 245 with a stick tire, whatever. There, but it's just not my style, right? It's just, it's not it. It needs to look good and function. And function. So honestly, I parked it because I couldn't get the balls to cut this thing up. I couldn't. Do you have the ball? We got for Christmas off RJ <laughs> but you know what dude it's been so long now I'm looking at it like I don't want to cut this car up I hate over fenders to be honest but I realize I'm not enjoying the car what's the point of owning it if I'm not enjoying it, it just just cut the damn thing up cut it up as you guys might remember if you've been around for a while uh, I got a Don Musk over fender kit I've had forever probably the nicest over fender kit you can get for an E36 my only concern is it's not wide enough but either way we got to cut the car up first although uh, you basically cut the car up the same way for any over fender so I don't know what to say I'm kind of distraught today, but we have a uh, little dead zone of parts coming in. So I figured we will use it to actually make some progress on this thing. I mean, look at it though. I know, it looks so good. It looks so good. It looks so good. Like, I love the way it looks right now. Obviously, it needs to be cleaned up quite a bit, but. So damn useless. It's so damn useless. And that, that was like cool in a sense, but no, this thing is. This thing will feel crazy with a whole bunch of traction. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's shut up for now and just get this thing in the air and get it prepped. So now that we got everything exposed, it's time to start doing some cutting. So we're gonna start with the rear because the rear is the hard part. The front's easy, we just cut it and we're good. The rear we actually have to cut specifically and then we have to steal it up too. So we have to cut it in a very specific way. So when it comes to tracing out your arch, this has been done a million times on E36s, so I already know what it really needs to be. So we're gonna go as far back as we can so the rear tire can go all the way in, but we need a little bit of lip for the bumper to actually sit against the quarter. And for the top arch, where I have it marked already, the inside of the arch, like the inside of the car here, this is how high it goes on the inside, so we kind of want to match it, right? And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> up there. And then for the very far outside, we want to go as far over as we can without actually cutting into the last seat of the trim, right? Besides that, we're going to kind of cut this uniformly, and we're going to cut the outside skin off first, and then we're going to utilize the inside skin to actually seal it up. So, so we're going to. So you hold it up high. Hold it up high, get a nice. Something like you could feel like the shape of the in inside arch, and you kind of just have to match that, right? All right, first cut on the car, and I can't be the only one with blood on my hands. So, boys, let's do this together. On three, one, yeah. I'm getting two, close. Three, go. That's it. What did we do? No turning back now. First cut is officially made. I could fix that if you want, if you don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Good price? Yeah. What's the turnaround time? <sighs> Alright, let's cut this thing up. Stinks. Another shot. 
That's what lies beneath. You know, like, when I first started cutting it, it felt real bad. But, you know, now I'm excited. This is good. Uphill from here. No turning back. No turning back. Even That's if you didn't sure. feel good. <laughs> so we had this little inner skeleton here, so I actually want to remove it. So I cut all the spot welds on it, cut the brace out, because this will prevent us from kind of gluing it together. So there she goes. So after cutting that brace off, we essentially have the whole inner panel exposed now. We still have to trim it here, so I'll do that next. We're going to rough cut this whole shape here because we don't need this much material. And then we're going to take a big ass hammer and we're just going to stretch the metal <laughs> as much as we can until it actually touches the outer outer arch. And we're going to use that to kind of seal it up. Make sense? Makes sense. Cool. Let's get to it. Poor car, dude. Insane. So now, we don't have a huge gap, which is nice, right? We only have like an inch and a half. Like my S13, it had like four inches. But I'm telling you, this metal will stretch, and it will stretch. You see it moving closer? Yeah. So we gotta sit here and massage this thing for, it's gonna take a minute, but it'll be worth it. Obviously, a lot of guys have probably seen that like slit and bend up technique that everyone does where you kind of have that inner wheel arch right there and they'll cut slits into it mm -hmm. and then they'll peel it up and then like seal it to the chassis. I mean, it works, right? If you're sealing your car up, but you know, this takes a little bit more work, but I think it's worth it. It looks a lot nicer when you're done. Nice. Damn. All right, so we're getting pretty damn close. As you can see, we're not far away. But before I get it fully touching, I want to take that inner brace, I guess we can call it, that we cut out and actually reattach it to here. As you can see, they're pretty damn close. So I'm going to tack it up in a couple of places like it was factory. And then we're going to bend this all the way to touch the outer skin. And then we'll start attaching the entire thing. Thumbs up. Shim the welder. This thing just put work on DJ's bay. Oh, yeah. Setting up for the kill. Brian got these settings down. Nice. He's working on DJ's car all week. Oh, yeah. Now we just work it over. Dude, this is, this is working too well. I tack it and then I beat, beat it over right next to it till it's touching, right? I'm just gonna work it over. Oh, it's cut back perfectly right here. Oh yeah, it's mint. Yeah, it's mint. It's right here. Right where I want it to be, yeah. We are good to go. Oh, we're good to go. Nice work. All right, so we got the surface all cleaned up, ready for some welds, but if we were to seal it up now, there'd be a bunch of bare metal inside there, and if moisture get in it, then it's gonna rust. You have a rusty ass car. Though you won't see it, because it's got it over, you don't want a rusty ass car. So, we're gonna seal it up with some weld through primer, right, because this will get primer on it, but we can still weld through it, not like normal paint where it prevent you from welding, so. Little B haul technique right here. Get it up in there. Boom. So we're gonna start from one corner, weld, bash, weld, bash, weld, bash, repeat until it's all sealed up. Sound good? Bash bandicoot. Bash bandicoot gym. Let's go. Boom. There it is. <sighs> this might take a while. <laughs> Dude, it's getting, it, it's looking nice. It, it's impressive how the inner layer is actually stretching to the outer. Like, so we're gonna finish this up, cut it, clean it, and we're good, so. How do you feel about all this? He knows what he's doing. <laughs> what me with a hammer? Quite a while, but it's worth it, I swear. So now that we have the whole lip welded up, 
It's nice, it's flush, it feels like a whole new wheel arch. We have to cut off all the excess stuff. So we're gonna cut like the inside of the welds. It's not gonna look the most prettiest, but then we're gonna flapper it smooth and call it a day. As long as it's sealed up, I'm happy, right? Yeah. Well, there's no going back now. It looks good though. You did your thing. I like it because it looks, it's sealed up and you, it doesn't even look like the quarter's distorted or anything at all. So uh, I can grind the welds on more if I want to, but at that point I'm just thinning out metal and I don't want to bother. So I'm going to clean it up and we got to seal it all. So if you might have realized the car caught fire a couple times, right? The undercoating inside the wheel well would just burn and fall off. So now there's no undercoating on the whole inside right here. We're going to have to take all the underbody off in the burnt areas, reseal it, and then obviously deal with the bare metal on the outside because we don't want that to rust but for now the hard part is officially done it is time consuming but i'm really happy how it came out so you know what sucks steve what we have to do another side <laughs> the other side and the fronts aren't that bad no the fronts take two seconds the front you just cut and that's it i'm happy how this came out let's see what brian has to say i'd, I'd like to see what let's, let's see what brian's grading is here that's me i mean it's not sharp here at all nothing or it's not distorted, which is nice. Look how, but what's nice too, when you see when you weld it up. Yeah, all the strength goes back. All the strength, look at this, it's like, mm -hmm. it's so nice. I mean, there's so much strength in this bond, in this arch, you've got to utilize it. Right here is perfect, because yep. it's not, it's nice and flat. But no, that's, it's exactly how I do it. I think people go, get crazy when they do this, they cut it, <laughs> like it's freaking slicing up a pie. <laughs> uh, and then. Uh, I think a lot of people do it because you just that's how you see everyone else do it. like i thought you did it like that forever just because everyone else does it so you didn't think any other way you know you're you're there's no porosity there's no holes there's no gaps in the weld like you don't even need seam sealer now mm. or you see everyone else just globs all this stuff all over the place mm -hmm. and then you're like that's a ferrari what <laughs> <laughs> letter grade let me hear it a letter grade i'd say this is a, a a b plus and it's i don't think i would do where's my extra credit for that a uh well that, i was just gonna say i would probably get a b plus or an a minus because i i'm not take well in it either be a, uh, a plus okay, so brian that's what makes yeah, it a yeah a if you plus. take it up and make it look real okay that's the a I'll that's accept your the b plus a, a plus i don't know you know what i mean what size tires going on this bad larry 305 come on it's silly break the axles <laughs> <laughs> oh man what size tires oh, going on oh, this well, bad larry well here's the thing the musk kit is my favorite kit by far it's a good line, the bro. only problem is it's not that wide i might have to step up kits unfortunately listen to this this is insane it's good glass bro, man bro you uh, get you get japanese fiberglass for japanese <laughs> car you sneeze on it and it cracks <laughs> And then a chunk of Bondo in the corner falls off and you gotta fix the whole thing. Just, oh. Look at this shit. The Polish dudes do it different. It's Don Musk, he Don makes Musk. the best kits out there. Honestly, like, beyond Japan, if I give this to any country right now, I've I think Poland would be that. the funnest country. I'm down, pierogies. Those guys go hard. The and drift beamers. Cars, first of all, they drift just as good as anyone else. They stance harder than everyone else. Facts, facts. Crazy. 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 I think we would get, I think we'd fit right in with those guys. Stashik. That's yeah, what they call me in up. Poland. They, they call me Stashik. Ask me how I know. I don't. How do you know? How do you know? Let me guess. Let me guess. You stop. <laughs> and Steve. <laughs> now I gotta go. Time me bushy. Okay? All right. All right. <laughs> all right. The front's mad easy because all I have to do is cut the damn thing. So, um, let's see. So we're gonna do the same thing we did uh, on the rear. We're gonna go halfway kind of into the trim. Mm -hmm. Uh, realistically, we can't really cut too much in the front because the over mounts, you know, here and then all the way up here. So we could take, technically if you want, you could take everything out of it. But really? We don't need to. So I was told by a lot of guys to go real far forward in the front, especially if you're on a drift car because of the angle. Yeah. So we're going to start partially on the trim. All the way to uh, Poland. <laughs> that thing. Oh man, that's a little too much. Let me that was try. crazy. I got real, I, got, I, got, <laughs> I went crazy with we're it. In the engine, we're in the bay. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna draw this one. Yeah, <laughs> a little Sharpie action.
That is too funny. I think that was a perfect cut. Because if you look, you could see the inner arch right here, like the, the piece of the frame. Obviously, going bigger than that isn't necessary, mm -hmm. really, because that's all we've, that's already your limiting factor, right? Yeah. So I think that we cut that pretty damn good. That's it. That's all the front one takes. That's it. <laughs> Car could have a mustache. A mustache. Boom. E36, oh. An LZ E36. Horns. Ha! That's right. I'll tack weld this thing right to the hood right now. Don't do it. Do it. <laughs> My boys in Poland would not like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's sad because I just cut his quarters off. Now he's hyped because he's going to have room for big tires and lots of angle. Happy boy. Happy boy. Happy beam. <laughs> <laughs> is it wide enough for you? Yeah, I think the front's gonna be fine. Oh, dude, I'm so hyped on this. Are you gonna paint it? Needs paint. Needs paint. Well, I couldn't paint the damn thing until I got myself to finally cut it up, so one step in the right direction. Nice work. Another, another happy smile for the beam. <laughs> That's it. Well, the fronts are easy, the rears. On to the next. All right, I feel like I've said enough about the car so far. Uh, I'm gonna finish up the other side tomorrow, at least in the rear quarter, and then we gotta raise the car. I have some fat tires, or fatter tires, to throw on the eclairs because I really wanna try and run these wheels still. I think I can, because before, they were fitting very tight, had very stretched tires, and they were cambered out. So I think, with a fitted tire and them not cambered out, they should actually fit very aggressive. And I, sh and I mean, the rears are nine and a half, so I could fit a decent sized tire on that. So I'm hoping the Eclairs will look good with a fitted tire. That's the hope. If not, we changed up and I put these in my living room and I'm never selling these. Don't never. ever ask. Don't be DMing. <laughs> I know I know. half the guys are going to be like, oh, look at the Eclairs. No, I'm never selling these damn wheels. Uh, but I'm so happy how the rear came out. And honestly, I hate it because... I know a lot of guys probably hate that I'm cutting this up, but you know, I was really, really worried about it. And now that I'm like cutting into it, honestly, I'm just so happy to be working on a, on a damn car. And uh, it actually looks nice with the fenders cut off because the fenders were pretty jank before. Looks like a project again. <sighs> At least she runs. Yeah, it does. Actually, she doesn't because no, <laughs> I don't even have an ECU for the, whatever. It's, it, I'm happy. Everything's great. And uh, we'll finish it up and ship it to Florida. How about that? Do it. Do it. Do it. We got ECUs too. I'll make a call. <laughs> Before I end the video for today, because uh, I gotta go home and edit, I want to peep over here. RJ has been buffing this thing all damn day, and he went on the other side now. How's it looking? I, I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, it's pretty good. This this door is a little funky. I'm not doing the bottom half. Yeah, because it's chipped up. Yeah. So uh, if you guys saw the last video, RJ started buffing the car. He did this rear half right here, and it looks insane. And now he did the trunk, and that look at dude. It's like, oh, look at right here. It looks like such a nice car. My little heart, my little heart. We destroy one thing, we improve another. <laughs> it's a shame the door is so damaged, but so be it. We have a solution coming for that. We'll talk about that later on, but. Now it's a shiny broken door. <sighs> when the hood is done and we get the headlights refinished, this thing is gonna look absolutely beautiful. Hopefully the coilovers show up any day now and we can get this thing uh, sitting a little prettier and we can take all this tint off because this tint is not doing it for me. And Stevie can have his wheel. Oh yeah, then we can finish. I got I got tires for Stevie. Throw the new tires on. We'll get him sitting right. Oh gang over everything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for now, I hope you guys uh, aren't too mad at me for cutting this car. But hey, on to the next stage of its evolution, and everything's gonna be great. So uh, <sighs> you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content, and we'll see you guys very shortly. Have a good night. <laughs>